I was talking to a farmer in Minnesota this summer, and he was in his 70s. And he said, you know, Darren, he goes, there's one thing. He said, if I could change one thing over my farming career, I'd have much more focus on soil erosion. He said, I just can't believe the difference from when I was a kid to now. You know, we used to do so much tillage and so much deep tillage every year. We just lost so much of our topsoil over my farming career. He said, if I could change anything, that would be it. Yeah, but you know, Darren, they didn't have a lot of options back then. I look at our grandpa and he put some terraces into a couple of fields where I'm just going, what do you need terraces there for? But then I got to thinking, you know, the only way he had to control weeds was either by hand, which wasn't very good, or tillage, and actually he was, I'm sure, using both methods. But the point is he had to do tillage to reduce bug populations, to dramatically reduce weed populations, to get the soil ready to seed. They didn't have as good of equipment back then to just go in and no-till, or, I mean, there was no strip-till equipment or anything like that. So that was about all they were left with. Thank goodness that we've made some advances over the years, so we don't have to use tillage. I mean, you certainly can, but you don't have to use tillage now in all cases. So in a couple of these fields where we don't have a lot of slope but grandpa put terraces in uh, I have no issue tearing them out because with modern farming today and strip till or even no till we can just about completely eliminate the erosion there and we don't even need the terraces now I'm not saying pull all terraces out I'm saying on almost flat ground terraces aren't really needed that much when you're reducing tillage. Well, hold on there, Brian. You're gonna create a firestorm here and you're taking away some of my thunder. You know, when we think about erosion, there's really two primary means of erosion that we're concerned about, and that's wind erosion and water erosion. And when we're thinking about water erosion, I've got a field that's got some terraces, Brian. I wish they would have been put in 30 years earlier and saved even more You have a lot soil. more slope though on that particular field and that's the whole thing. And with this erosion, one of the things that I've been trying to help people understand is when you look at your soils, it's not just about the dirt loss. You say, oh yeah, I lose a little bit of dirt, I can move it back, uh, whatever, it, it's no huge deal. But what I want you to think about is that top inch, that top half inch, that is the richest soil you've got. It's usually very high in organic matter. It's extremely high in plant nutrients. And if that goes down the hill through wind or rain, you just lost a whole bunch of money. Well, you certainly lost money, but you lost time too. And you think about how long it takes to build soils back up. Wow, I've got some ground where there's no topsoil left on the hilltops. And you just can't build that back overnight. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of time to do sure that. You can. Darren, a mere 20 to 40 years and you'll have that soil built back That's up. what I mean. You can't do it overnight. <laughs> and, and so you got to think about those things. So for me, when I think about soil erosion on my hilly ground, I'm concerned about tillage. I'm going to do much less tillage than has ever been done before on that ground. We can get by with no-till or strip-till. Now, if you need just a little bit of tillage to make things work out for your system, I think strip-till is a great way to go. But no-till can certainly be managed as well. When you think about wind erosion off those hilltops, we've got to leave some residue out there. Now you can leave corn stalks, for example, or wheat stubble standing tall, or with uh, corn stalks, for example, some guys say, well, I can't manage it when I've got those great big chunks that may fall over on my row and now I can't cut them and move them out of the way. We like to use the chopping corn head. Anyway, the reason why we're talking about this today is because you go back to the 1930s, really dry years, and then- Kind of like as, this year. Right, and then as farmers, we started putting in all these trees all over the country to help reduce that wind erosion, okay? We have no-till practices or strip-till practices today different than what we did back then. We're never going back to the Dust Bowl era. It's never gonna happen again, okay? But there are a lot of trees that are coming out all around the country. That's fine if you wanna tear some trees out, but let's just keep in mind, now you don't have that windbreak that you had before. You've gotta do something else out in your field. And especially when you're in the northern part of the country, let's say you're in North Dakota and you're doing full-scale tillage, you're tearing all the trees out, now you are setting yourself up for a lot more wind erosion than what you've had in the past. So I just want you to keep this in mind and maybe somehow, some way, you need to be reducing some tillage. I know there are a lot of people that are doing just light tillage. They're going over the top with a Salford machine or some type of Coulter machine to just kind of chop things up a little bit, leave a lot of residue out there. That's certainly better than plowing when we're talking about reducing erosion. But what I would also want you to consider is maybe do some strip till instead of doing full scale tillage again in the spring. Well, those things are great, Brian, but you didn't even talk about drainage tile. If we improve drainage on our farm, with subsurface drainage tile. Studies have shown erosion reductions of 40 to 60%. That's huge, and it's a good thing for soil erosion, but it doesn't help us stop our weed of the week. If you've got this tough weed, we'll show you how to control it coming up next.